Should you play games in prison? Should you not play games in prison? Does everybody play games in prison? What games are there to play in prison? Let's talk about it. First of all, you're going to have some dudes that's going to be like, no, nah, man, I don't play no games, bro. I don't play no games, bro. I got kicked out of second grade because I wouldn't go to recess because I don't play no games. So anyways, man, those dudes are everywhere there, you know what I mean, which is cool. They can watch TV. They can read books. They can do whatever they want to do on their bid, and that's absolutely okay. But it's not for me, and it's not for a lot of the cats that I've known when we're down. Um, reading books is great on, on lockdown time. Television shows are cool when it's something you really want to see. But when it's just like people watching stories all day long, bro, like literally the young and the restless. What are you doing? You know what I mean? So, uh for me, man, the biggest thing I wanted to do was keep my brain occupied at all times if possible, man. I wanted to be playing a game. I wanted to be learning something. I wanted to be, I don't know, man, doing something. So when you're in the county jail, the main things there are to do, mainly what people do is play spades. Spades is the biggest game inside, without a doubt. If you're not playing it, you want to know how to play it because everybody's playing it and they're kicking it and having a good time and you're in jail and you want to forget that you're in jail. Um, so you learn how to play spades, man. Spades is a card game. It's basically where you use all 52 cards. Um, the spades in the deck are the strongest suit in the deck. Everything else just goes by suit. Everybody plays around. You run out of a card, you cut it. Different ways to play it, man, depending on your skill level. Um, chess was also a big thing. Uh, basketball whenever the basketball courts were open man people were always on the basketball courts. so there was an inside court and an outside court most uh prisons in jail are gonna have both just because of weather um so yeah basketball is definitely a big thing man um not a whole lot to do in jails man it seems like most jails are going to be a small confined pod area you're not going to have uh wreck all the time from there sometimes uh the wreck yard would be open at our local jail if you was in the big block you could walk in and out of that all day long which was really great to get out and actually get some fresh air walls all the way around and an open ceiling so you can't see anything but the sky but it's still better than sitting inside looking at the cameras <laughs> Um, and then when you get to prison, man, there's a million things more to do when you get to prison, man. You got basketball, you got soccer, you got bocce ball, you got, uh, horseshoes, you got handball, you got softball, man. There's a uh, softball leagues at the prison I was in where you have an A league and a B league. So the A leagues are really good guys. The B leagues, the not so good guys, but everybody gets a chance to play. Um, a lot of those teams were based on race. So you had the, uh, the white boys in the, uh, A, a league was called the wood pile and then uh i think the b league was called the 88 crew you know all white boys then the indian guys i don't think there was enough indian guys there to even have a team so uh i think a few white guys played on their team with them too uh and then of course you had uh you know everybody else in the prison some of it i guess was run i don't even know dude like i didn't pay attention but some of it i guess was gangs or or cars this would be the dc team this would be the whatever california team florida team i don't know um but there's definitely a lot more to do when you get to prison. Now, another thing about playing games too, man, I want to talk about is people talk about playing games like you don't want to play with me. Don't play with me. Like I'm not on that, uh, you know what I mean, open my door up while I'm taking the shit and, and leave it open for the whole world to see type shit. Like I'm not going to do that. You know what I mean? Don't play none of them games with me because I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to deal with it very well. You know what I'm saying? So I don't play none of that shit right off the top. Um, that's what a lot of people are talking about when they say, I don't play no games. So I've seen guys that will go in and fart on other dude's pillows, bro. And then that guy wakes up the next day with a big old swollen pink eye. You know what I mean? That's that's not funny. Like, I'm not playing like that. You don't play with me like that. I had a guy one time when I was uh, I was sitting there playing cards, man. I didn't even fucking know this kid, bro. And he, he like, he's behind me and he pours water on my head. Not a lot, just a little drip of water on my head. And I turn around like, yo, who the, what the fuck do you think you're, and he comes around like this, bro, and I had a whole cup of coffee like this, fresh cup of coffee sitting there. I said, whoosh, and just threw the whole thing of coffee right in his face, bro. Whoosh, 
washed all down. CO was right behind him. Like the CO didn't see it happen. But that dude just like, he's like, what the fuck, bro? I was just, I was just kidding, man. You know, like whatever. And then he walks to his cell and now there's coffee dripping off of him and there's coffee all over the floor. And everybody's like, what? And I'm like, yo, I don't fucking play with him like that. I don't know that dude, bro. Don't, don't fucking play with me. I don't know you. So uh, that's a thing that, you know, you definitely don't want to do because shit like that, it gets you hurt, bro. I've also seen people that'll throw cold water on someone when they're in the shower. Like, that's so funny. That stuff will get you hurt, man. You don't want to do that stuff while you're inside. Um, another thing is, like, if people are on the phone, man, you want to be respectful. You don't want to be over there, you know, uh, uh, making a bunch of noise by somebody when they're on the phone slamming dominoes or slamming cards and shit like that because... You don't know what that man's going through. You don't know who he's talking to. That could be his kid. That could be something crazy going on with his girl and he's already pissed off. And the next thing you know, you're getting the phone ripped off the wall and they're bludgeoning you to death with a phone, bro. So, yeah, man, respect is a big thing, man. Uh, definitely have to pay attention to what you're doing, learn to read the room and, and know which guys to talk to and which guys not to talk to. Um which gets me also to, uh, like, when I was in prison, man, we played a lot of volleyball. The white boys really liked to play volleyball. Our tables were by the volleyball court. It was a sand pit. That was one of our jobs uh, was to keep the sand pit raked out and cleaned up and stuff. Uh, I had that job for like a month, and I was like, yo, fuck this. I'm going back to the block and running the store, and I became an orderly. Um but uh, we played a lot of volleyball. The Mexican guys came over a lot and played volleyball with us, man, which was definitely some of the best games that we had, you know. Uh, they could play, and uh, we were awesome too, so, you know what I mean? They would beat us, and we would beat them back. Like, we, you know, it was a pretty good thing going back and forth. And then when we have volleyball, like, as far as tournaments and stuff like that, man, I feel like the black guys mainly dominated everything. You know, that's just the way it was. Like, they, they crushed it in softball. They definitely crushed it in basketball. I don't know about the handball tournaments. I can't remember who would really win them. But when it came to the volleyball tournaments, bro, I killed them all. I killed them all. They could not touch us. My volleyball team absolutely decimated everybody on the yard every single time, which I guess is, you know, kind of like how it's to be expected when them dudes never played. And we did. Like, they didn't know how to bump set spike like we did. We were just awesome at what we did, man. Anyways, you know, that's just a little bragging on, on how we crushed it in there. Um, also, I was one of the only white boys. There was two white boys on the compound of 1,600 people that could actually dunk a basketball. So I was one of them dudes. Um, everybody wanted me to play on their basketball team. But honestly, I'm just not that good, man. I'm not that good under the whistle. I can't handle the ball and all that shit. Now, we're playing three on three, and I can post up. And, whoosh, and then, you know what I mean? I was pretty good at that. Uh but yeah, so that gets me to the kickball on Christmas Day story, man. I put up a community post about that. It seemed like a couple people wanted to hear that story. So here we go. Um, it was Christmas Day. It had to be 2005 or 2006 because I got out in 2009. But anyways, uh, Christmas Day, it's raining. It's not cold like you would think December 25th. Most times it's cold here in Virginia. So uh, it was pretty warm, and it was raining like hard all day, bro. And, of course, everybody in the prison's off, so what are we going to do? And I've been trying to get these guys to play a goofy game of kickball anyways. Like, I'm a silly dude. Y'all could probably tell that by now. If you haven't checked out the other videos, go check them out, because I just like to laugh and have fun, which was probably why I got along with everybody. Um, so we go to play kickball, bro, and I, I think we ended up going out there with, I don't know, whatever it was, five, ten, whatever, how many people, and we had a couple people set up, and we're all wearing our khakis, and we all start playing kickball, roll the ball, kick the ball, so people are like not outside, bro, like it's raining, and people are inside, but there's a five-minute move every hour or so. So people come in and people come out. So people are going to education and, and back to the gym, whatever, going in and out. Uh, and they would come out and exchange things on these moves where they would buy soda or pick up a porn book. Who knows what they were doing? 
but they seen us. Like, they was like, yo, look at these white boys out here. And they was coming over to the fence. And they was like, these motherfuckers are crazy, bro. Look at these white boys out here playing kickball. They playing kickball in the softball field, bro. It's raining. You know what I mean? It's crazy. And then the white boys are like, yo, how long y'all going to be out here? Y'all going to be out here long? They're like, yo, we're going to be out here all day, bro. Come on, get your stuff. Get your stuff. Tell everybody. Spread the word through the blocks. Next thing you know, there's probably 20 of us out there, 25, whatever it is. And we're all playing kickball. In the rain, bro. This was epic. So uh, I changed the rules halfway through the game, and I was like, yo, here's what you got to do now. You have to run the bases backwards. So instead of first, second, third, it was third, second, first. And it's so natural for you to hit the ball, kick the ball, whatever it is you're doing on a softball field, for you to automatically run the first base. This is what you do, bro. It's normal. So as soon as you kick that ball, it's like putting your pants on wrong leg at a time. Have you ever tried to put your pants on, you know, right leg first or left leg first, the opposite of what you normally do? Pay attention to that one time, dude. It's not easy. It's like, whoa, what's going on? So first and then you'd be like oh shit whoa what's going on boom and then you have to run to third and, and i think we had them little red balls man is the only reason i thought of the idea so we threw the balls at you, you know what i'm saying and if it missed you bro boom it would bounce and it would be going over there if nobody was there to back you up so now you're running the second and i made it where you had to slide into every base so it's raining there's puddles of water in front of every base bro it's just slosh and rain and i'm like you have to slide into every base, like, no matter what, <laughs> and, and we were a mess, dude, we were so full of mud, we had so much fun, though, dude, it's like, it's one of the, the memories that I can actually point out in my head about being in there, that was a specific day because of what day it was, and exactly what happened, just because of what it was, like, it's such a, I'm not gonna say a good memory, but it was one of the best ones that I could have made while I was in prison. Um, worst of all situations that you could possibly get in is prison, man. So, you know, when you get in there, you definitely want to do whatever you can to, you know, play this game, play that game, keep your mind occupied, read a book. Like books were great because you'd be laying in the bunk and it's like that book just teleported you out of the prison for a little bit, man, and you were stuck in this world. Like, I read Game of Thrones when I was inside. So before it was ever a movie, Game of Thrones was a book. Um, and I remember, I think I probably got the, through the first four while I was inside. So, man, sitting there reading those books was like, ah, oh, bro, it just took you out into this dragon world with these kings, kings and, 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 and sword fighters and, and, and all this craziness going on, man, and it was cool. Um, but it wasn't for all the time, you know what I mean? Yeah, lockdown, of course. When we did lockdown for days and weeks at a time, bro, yes, I devoured many books, a lot of educational books and a lot of entertainment books as well. Um, but yeah, man, just wanted to tell you about Christmas Day kickball. Um, I don't tell these stories like, you know what I mean? Yes, these are entertainment stories, man. Uh, and I feel like a lot of you guys are... are, are are enjoying them, man. Y'all telling me in the comments. So, you know, drop another comment on this one. Let me know what you think, you know, uh, hit the like button, hit the share button, man. Um, I just hit up Jay Williams. Um, I don't know if any of you watch his content, but he has a big channel. Um, he's very local to me from my understanding. I'm in Virginia. He's in West Virginia, or at least his videos are from what I've watched so far. So I sent him an email, man. I'm trying to try to do a, uh, a collab with him which i think would be dope as hell so if any of you want to help me do that in any way mention share or something to jay williams that would be dope man so anyways since thanks you're for still around out. watching here to end of the video i'm at 450 subscribers at the time of making this video when i get to 500 subs uh, i'm gonna give away a spanking monkeys t-shirt and a sticker I will mail it to you. All you got to do is send me your address. What I'm going to do is I'll make a video about that. So you have to stay tuned. You have to watch the next videos in order to get the t-shirt. Um, but I'll probably do a, a comment, drop a comment in a certain video, and then we'll do a, a random comment generator and pick someone out of that in the next video. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for the support again, man.